to reach the championship series. But wait, there is a chance. Four teams have actually come all the way back out of the loser's bracket to win the World Series. Here is the Capital One starting lineup for the Alabama Crimson Tide, led by Kenley Cahalan, their lefty shortstop, batting nearly 400 in this NCAA tournament with six runs batted in for the 14 seed. They finished in ninth place this year in the SEC and still believe they could be here. And sure enough, they are amongst the final eight teams still playing. And if they want to keep playing, they got to get through Cassidy Curd and the Blue Devils, the sophomore out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. Curd's got a lot of really good movement, late, sharp. One of the things I really like, though, look at that, just 30 walks on the year. She does a really good job of being through the strike zone. In fact, 61% of the time, her strikes or pitches or strikes in the zone. That, that's fourth in all of you one. Kristen White to lead things off. The center fielder for the Tide. Against this Duke team that is the number 10 seed. And yes, if you're wondering, a 10 seed has won the championship. In fact, the lowest seed to ever do it was a 10 seed Oklahoma a handful of years ago. Ball inside. You heard the call, ball inside. Megan Rabin behind the plate. Cameron Ellison at first, Aaron Peterson second. John Baca down at third base, the umpiring crew tonight. White coming in, a 300 hitter. Terrific speed out of that leadoff spot. Out of Phoenix City, Alabama. Moved up to the top of the batting order late in the season. And that was one of the keys for their success down the stretch for Patrick Murphy's club. Lost last night to UCLA four to one. It was a tie game into the sixth inning. Slap to short. Baker takes it on the hop. One down. Cassidy Kerr, the sophomore in the circle, coming from that left side, just has so much movement. It's a rise ball at the top of the zone, a lot of upspin, but it's a curve ball that she will throw inside. So backdoor to lefties, but she also uses a fastball. It's about three to four miles an hour faster than her other pitches, trying to sneak that underneath the hands of the hitters. She's doing a very good job in the last 23 innings. And really the key for her is just, she, as she's done all year, is just limit free passes, put the ball through the zone. She's got that great late sharp movement, use that defense behind her. And one of the keys though is that they have had seven errors in the postseason, so they need to play that really clean defense behind Kurt. Pitched about a third of their innings during the regular season, but up to half in the postseason. Excellent snag at third, but then the throw offline from gold. And Kenley Cahalan is in scoring position. That ball just bashed over there. Great job by Anna Gold, but here's the problem is that she's gonna throw that short. Tapiaz needs to go out as a first baseman. You gotta be able to pick that. You see her, her stretch, it wasn't deep enough. She needs to go out further so that she can make that pick out of the dirt. That is a definitely a catchable ball. And then an E5 that allows Cahalan to second base. It looked like an accurate throw would have been able to get her at first. So Cahalan, her fifth infield hit of the postseason. And a chance here for Jenna Johnson. Johnson, one of the only hitters in this lineup that hits lefties well. That's actually been one of the biggest Achilles heels for this Alabama offense. They have struggled against lefties. One of the biggest decisions why Curd got the start against them. Jenna, the grad student out of Franklin, Tennessee. On the season 262. She has four runs batted in so far in this NCAA tournament. 
There's Patrick Murphy. Winners of the 2012 National Championship when they were dancing in the rain. First title for the SEC. Florida went on to win a couple more. Down by the right side. Over to first for the second out, but Cahalan motors over to third. It's a nice job of two strikes for Jenna Johnson, just understanding the situation, shortening up, putting the ball to the right side of the field to advance the runner. Now betting catcher number 34. Beautiful look at Holy the child. crowd in the field here on a gorgeous night in Oklahoma City after a uh, an overcast day. Sun's out tonight for our Elimination Friday doubleheader. Ball cut. Coming up later tonight, Stanford and Oklahoma State in a win or go home showdown. Here's Marley Giles, the sophomore catcher out of Clanton, Alabama. Cassidy yeah. Kerr likes to get inside of those righties because of that Marley Giles just backing way off of the plate. Knowing the game plan, you'll see her kind of get in the box and then make sure she takes a step back off the plate. Already digging out that chalk with the right foot. Smacks that towards the gap. And off the base of the wall in the right center, Cahalan comes in to score. And Bama is on the board here in the first. Well, Smitty, you know this. The beauty of a 2-0 count for a hitter is you're looking for the pitch that you want. She's off the plate. She's looking away. She gets a pitch that's up. All you got to do is meet this one. She's in a perfect position to get the pitch in the count she wants and drive it. Right center field gap and put Bama on the board. Second double for her in the NCAA tournament. Well, she's a big plus being back. She had that injury mid-year, really the the key component of this lineup along with Cahill. Giving some advice to the hitters to come for the Tide. The two out RBI double for Giles. Down the line and right drifting over is Claire Davidson, but a run on the board for Bama Duke picking up the bats when we come back. And look at that NCAA tournament numbers for her. The 500 batting average with a home run, six runs batted in. Continuing on her fabulous regular season as the ACC Player of the Year. And a first-team All-American. She actually hit 500 with a 1,000 OPS in conference play this season. And they'll be up against the freshman who's been getting more and more playing time the second half of the season. It's Jocelyn Brisky out of Phoenix. Ten and five on the season. Patrick Murphy lauds her pro demeanor. Had a big start in the Supers against Tennessee last week and won, so... A reward for her to get the start here tonight, trying to keep their season alive on Elimination Friday night. Deanna Jennings will get things going for the Blue Devils. A 398 hitter in the first inning of games in her career. Sophomore out of Houston. Marissa Young was telling us she loves the chess match that you get to play with pitchers. Especially in that leadoff spot, setting the tone. Jennings has so many different tools. She was solely short game and had a hard time staying in the batter's box, went to hitting away. Ball. Just this year. She yeah. A little bit in high school, but almost of late, the power has come. It just shows the athleticism that she has because it is not easy when you're just slapping and bunning all the time to then swing away. Infield still playing her short game, and that is outside the bag at third. Yeah, and she's really moved up in the box, knowing that Brisky throws a lot of drop ball hard down. So plate forward and catch that pitch before it really starts to dive into the dirt. Diana's had a hit in eight of her last nine games. It was a homerless regular season, but both of her <laughs> taters have come in the postseason. 
including a massive swat to help beat Missouri in the Supers, and a strikeout there for Brisky. One down. And this is where the freshman is so strong is because she will work you down, 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 and then she's got this sneaky rise ball that she will show you with two strikes. That's her strike him out pitch where she's got really good chase and whiff on it. So she's gonna be go-to drop, but her best swing and miss is that rise ball. She'll chase you with it, she'll whiff you with it. And here is the showdown with Davidson, the senior out of Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Well, Coach Marissa Young was telling us her mentality at the plates is symbol one. C ball, hit ball, just like she does there. Good for extra bases. And the one out double for Davidson. Her second hit of this World Series. Yeah, she does keep it simple. See ball, hit ball, especially when it's middle. Look how late she lets this ball get to her. She's in the middle of the box and just allows it to travel, gets it to a point where she can meet it. This is how hard she hit it. 70 miles an hour off the bat. That's gonna get to the wall every time. 70 miles an hour exit velo and softball is really, really good. All right, so let's see if Duke can cash in. They did not have a hit against Oklahoma yesterday with a runner in scoring position. Ball. They were 0 for 3 in a 9-1 six-inning loss. Here's Amina Vega, sophomore out of DeBerry, Florida. Here we go. Ball. There are other all-American first teamer, so they line them all up at the top of the order. Okay, here we go. And for a strike to Vega. Amina was 0 for 3 in her World Series debut yesterday. Fouls out and off the leg. She's got great bat to ball skills. Super low strikeout rate. Doesn't swing and miss a whole lot. You can really spin it to get it by her. Extra hand eye coordination plus the bat speed. Chance here for Duke to try and tie it up. Vega pulls that out to right field. Lauren Johnson, who gets the start tonight for the injured Larissa Pruitt makes the play. So with two down, the Duke Blue Devils. It's been a while since they've scored early in a game. How about back to April 28th, over a month since they've scored in the first inning. Hey, Tech, walk out here with me. Let's see if Freelich can break that up. She's been their power hitter lately. Out of Lexington, Mass. Take you back to yesterday, second inning, leadoff batter, solo home run. And this was against Oklahoma, Kelly Maxwell. This place got real quiet. That put them up 1-0, they ended up losing that game, but Frankie has been red hot. Three home runs in her last four games. square to get both eyes on Risky. So there was just a discussion between the home plate umpire, Megan Rabin, who went out to Brisky to tell her, hey, you need to slow it down a little bit. You're quick pitching. I love it. I love that she's uh, ready to go. She don't need no stinking pitch clock. No pitch clock. <laughs> <laughs> it always tells you a lot is from a hitter's perspective, when a pitcher is doing that, they're really confident. Yeah. When pitchers are, mm -hmm. you know, taking deep breaths, taking a long time. It's like, okay, I got him. There you see the three homers in her last four games. She'll put this in play. A nice hop to Kahalen. And the side is retired. One complete elimination Friday night. Bama in front.
Knoxville. They're here in their first Women's College World Series, but I think it was a vision she had from day one of the program. She went to the players in her program and said, what should we put on the door of our very first softball facility? And they said, today is for June, meaning every single day you're coming into this facility to work. It is with an eye towards June. I hate to be the one to point out today is May 31st, so they have to get this win today. <laughs> All of that work they have put in, they have got to make sure that they make it to June. This is a survival game for them, but I love that from day one, Marissa Young said to her players, what will it take? That daily reminder that this is where they want to be. Yeah, they uh, have built this on their resiliency this year in their seventh season. They've taken seven different steps that they've set up in the program. Obviously, that last one was to get to June. They beat the seven seed Missouri to get here. <laughs> Personal and athletic struggles along the way for the Duke family. They're now trying to get to play another day. It would be Sunday here in Oklahoma City. Riley Valentine lifts that out to deep center field. Jennings is there, one down. And Marissa, her husband James Lamar, their four children. James has had a plethora of health issues that started around this time last year. This is actually the first time he has been able to travel with the team. He's got his ACC softball champions t-shirt on right there. He enjoyed watching them score their first run here yesterday. Still not out of the woods yet, but uh, they are confident. They have a lot of belief, not only in their softball abilities, but in the fight in that man right there on the left to get through it. Here's Lauren Essman, the senior transfer from Michigan out of Kalamazoo in the seventh spot in the lineup. An RBI double for Marley Giles in the first. Got Alabama on the board. Another fly ball headed towards Amaya Burgess this time, two down. This is exactly what you expect out of her. She's got that upspin. She's got that fastball that has an upward spin has actually one of the lowest batting averages against just above 60. Rise ball spin, curve ball as well. That'll bring up Lauren Johnson, the freshman out of Franklin, Tennessee. Dropping down the butt. And they got her at first. A one, two, three inning for the Blue Devils. 1-0 tied. Lifts one deep, and that's gone. Sanders lifts that one deep left, and that one will leave the building. Third home run of the day. Three home runs for Alabama in their win yesterday. UCLA, Jordan Worry, a home run late in the game to advance. And look at that showdown set for Saturday afternoon on ABC. Texas, Florida will be the Saturday night primetime game on ESPN in the winner's bracket. And oh, is everybody ready for those coming up tomorrow? OU and UCLA. The teams may not be talking about it, but you know the alums are chirping, the fans are all fired up. That's dynasty versus dynasty in that one tomorrow night. What you want? Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it all year. They're going after, trying to break <laughs> the Bruins, and now they get to go head to head. UCLA has a chance to break it. It was a UCLA world back in the 80s, including that three-peat from 88 to 90. Uh, but recently, it's been Oklahoma, including their three-peat. And I'm gonna just right here take a look, look at this, folks. Woohoo! Look at those home run numbers. Here we go. Let's it's play. a different game. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. It's about the circle. Yeah. I saw that, somebody. What were you circling? The home runs. Uh, the home run. runs. The the 20, 25 uh, home runs back there in the um, the white back ball. In the, with back the, in the day. The yes, had to use a much heavier bat. And then over 400 home runs as of late. <laughs> <laughs> Big boppers. Light difference. Ball down. 
Texas is trying to win its first national championship. They're the number one seed for the first time. And the Florida Gators are trying to bring it back to the SEC. They won back-to-back -back titles in 2014 and 15. But that is the last time that the SEC has won a title. So yeah. it's been a while. Both Florida and Alabama repping the SEC. And, of course, next year, Oklahoma and Texas will join them in the conference. Yeah. To third base, Bailey Dowling makes the catch. Hey, we've got game six of the NHL Eastern Conference Finals tomorrow night on ABC and ESPN Plus with the Panthers hosting the Rangers in Florida up three games to two looking to return to the Stanley Cup Finals. Saturday night, ABC 8 Eastern. Ball inside. Here's Anna Gold, the career home run leader for Duke softball out of Boston Spa, New York. Still got another year to go to add to that tally. That's a dirty movement on it. <laughs> drop had a run. Yeah. So not just dropping down, but running into the hands. Dual movement. Good. Good spin speed on top of that velocity speed as well. Ball's down. Well, the other thing that, you know, coming in for Brisky, who was uh, multiple player of the year honors in high school during her prep career out of Arizona, where they can crank out some good pitchers. But you go to a place like Alabama and you know that Kayla Beaver's coming in and you know you're following in the footsteps of Montana Fouts, one of the greatest ever there. Yeah. Uh, you, you gotta want the ball if you're gonna go to that place. And she is proving that she wants the ball and wants to be a part of that legacy. Well, and that's a part of it. I mean, as a pitcher, you've got to want the ball. You have to want to be in that circle and follow those legacies and create your own. You know, create a, a, a career following in the footsteps of others. How about her first half of the season? And now, what have you done for me lately? Well, you've done a lot of good things for Alabama. I mean, a pitcher like Brisky, too, sometimes it's just relaxing and, and letting the ball do the work. Throw it, spin it, but let the ball do the work. Goal, deep center field. Back that goes, and out of goal, the home run for Duke. Ties it up here in the second. Well, and that's what we were just talking about with Brisky. Being the freshman, she needs to let that ball do the work. And that's just one of those mistakes that sometimes you make when you're a young pitcher. You put the ball in a position over the plate where it can just get hammered to 3-2 count. You don't want to walk a hitter. And you end up putting the ball in a spot where it can just get punished. Well, and from the hitter's point of view, I mean, you got full count coming out hacking. You're saying, yes, eyes get big. You want to throw me middle, middle? That's what I'm going to do with it. Ninth home run of the season for Anna Gold, down here, middle and bottom of the order. And a huge blast. Tie this thing up. Oh, that's big for her. The home run numbers have been down this season, but a big blast there. So both of their World Series runs yesterday and today, courtesy of home runs from Freelich and now Anna Gold. Ball. And here's Giselle Tapia, the first baseman. Five-year starter out of Long Beach, California. Yeah. Tapia goes the opposite way. And the go-ahead run aboard here for Duke. send it down to Holly Rowe. Well, Duke softball has had some cliffhangers the last couple of weeks, waiting until later innings to score those home runs or get those wins. So they had a very distinguished speaker come and talk to them, Coach K, in postseason. He said, listen, ladies, I love you. You're doing a great job, but we've got to score the runs a little bit earlier. <laughs> it is such a cliffhanger. They don't want to stay up so late, have to wait and see the, the ending of that story. So I know they were trying to score earlier for Coach K. That was uh, kind of his motivation. 
Well, the late inning scoring in the NCAA tournament, you see what they've done. Fifth inning or later. So uh, add one to the tally in the first three innings with the home run ball tonight. And right now, too, just these Duke hitters, as they come through the line of the communication, patience. Brisky has got a lot of late movement, and they're waiting late to hit her deeper into their body, and that's where the power is. Back-to-back -back big hits. Well, they only had three hits last uh, yesterday against Oklahoma. They've already matched that three hits here in the first couple of innings. And a couple of very hard hit balls that gold home run over 70 miles per hour on the exit velo. Went about 250 feet. Here we go. Let's play. See if they can tack on some more at the bottom at the of their order. Jada Baker. Jada Baker out of Longwood, Florida. Looking to drop down the bunk. Noteworthy is you see another Florida player on this Duke roster. The majority of their roster east of the Mississippi and a lot of southeastern talent. As the game has spread from the west coast east. But now uh, over 25 years around the southeast. Frisky going back to that drop ball. And this one she just gets... The chase downstairs, Baker just follows it from low to lower. Two down as Oklahoma State gets off the bus. They have a date with Stanford later tonight, elimination game. Cahalan was moving towards the bag at second on the hit and run, and she hit it where she wasn't. So if you take a look at Cahalan, she's going to be cheating a little bit, trying to get over here to second base to, to cover the steal. And when she does that, she vacates her position. And then this is just perfect hitting going right through. Actually, it's not even the five, six holes. Right back up to the shortstop position. Charging heaven over to first. Ends the threat, but a run up for Duke to tie the score. In ABC and ESPN Plus. That is crazy good. This guy is something else. It's going to be fantastic. Welcome back to the 2024 Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. The tradition continues. You hit a home run, your parents get the home run ball. Now there's out of gold. Ball sent out. Ball delivered to Julie Gold. Look, she is all in. Look at that. Man, you would never think this is their first time. They are ready. <laughs> the earrings, the blue devil. I mean, the number tattoo on the cheek. Get it, Julie. I love it. Gold evens the score and what a piece as we head to the third. You got to win it to stay in it tonight on Elimination Friday. Winners get to play on Sunday in another elimination game. Ball. Loser departs at the first exit of this Women's College World Series as we cut the field from eight down to six by the end of the night. Here's Callie Hevlin. Nine and in the top for the Tide. Michigan. One for three in the UCLA game yesterday. They were even with the Pac-12 champs right to the finish. And then the Jordan Woolery three-run home run in the bottom of the sixth was the game winner for the Bruins. 
So the 12 time national champions from Westwood in the winner's bracket against Oklahoma tomorrow. Oklahoma has won an NCAA tournament record 19 games in a row. The last team to beat them was UCLA in the World Series a couple years ago. In the national semis to force an if necessary game and then the, and then the Sooners beat them 15 to nothing the next game. Hevlin gets a hold of one, back to the track, looking for the fence, and at the wall it's caught and brought back in by Amaya Burgess. Rob job out and left for the Blue Devils. I mean, if there's a theme for 2024, it is outfielders literally doing the best job I've ever seen. Not only here in OKC, but going up and robbing home runs. Amaya Burgess, we've seen her in the Super Regionals in the postseason make diving catches. This one takes away a run what would have been the lead up and over. The timing and the understanding of when the wall is coming is so huge. And the way she peeked over. Kristen White, fabulous point. Infield single with one out here at the top of the order. Now for the Crimson Tide, shortstop number 41. Well, you hit one 221 feet and then you drop one down two feet. But this is textbook. This is so hard to do as a left-handed batter to take the ball down the line with you. Once you do with a left-handed pitcher, she wants no part of it. It's all top of you and it's a whole lot of base hits. Go ahead, run aboard here for Kenley Cahalan. Reached on an error and scored in the first. The official score did change that in the scorebook from a single and an error to just an error. There you go, nice handoff there. Didn't spill a drop. It's a pro. You know, what we're seeing already is there's a, there's room in this game for everybody, right? I mean, uh -huh. the outstanding defensive play on a ball that had an exit velocity of 72 miles an hour, and then you drop down the bun at two miles an hour, and <laughs> you're on first. Don't worry about it. We're all inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 0 2 from Cassidy Curd to Halem. Fly ball to Davidson. Two down. This is a great job by Cassidy Curd. Kenley Halen is the hottest hitter in this lineup. And normally left on left, you're going to see a lot of curveballs. Instead, she just pounded her inside. Gahalen challenged her on the plate, and Curd was up for the challenge. That was a great job to get her out. Well, that's one of the keys. You've got to be able to really establish that inner half, that inside corner. Thread that needle. Here's Jenna Johnson. Nobody from Alabama left field number 88, Jenna Johnson. Jenna grounded out to second base her first time up. Johnson. Burgess has it again on the run this time, coming in to make the play. What a piece, mid three. Maya Burgess just made that stellar catch coming in, but she's been all over the Distinguished Melinda Fisher Distinguished Service Award. Beth actually cried more than I saw her cry on her wedding day. She was crying. But all of the people who love Beth, you have put in so much work. You are legendary for your love, passion, commitment, and expertise at softball. We love you, Beth. Oh, stop, Holly. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are, years. what are 30 years it's been? How many memories have we made together as a crew, but how fun has it been 
to put our voices and our entire crew, all the pictures, to help these young student athletes make their memories of a lifetime, too. It's been a blast. You've been the voice of our sport, Beth. Well, let me it's tell amazing. you. Three decades. <laughs> you started when you were six. It's amazing. Yes. Yes, and help grow the game. You know, iconic calls. Whenever you hear commercials coming on, promoting the event, you hear Beth's voice everywhere. I love it. It's a well, my piece parents, of history. My parents raised a leadoff hitter. You know. <laughs> and and to, to receive the Melinda Fisher Award, the, the fantastic coach over a 1,000 wins at Illinois yep. State, all that she's done, you know, hopefully we've been able to tell some stories about all the amazing people around this game over the years. Debbie Doom. It always goes back to Debbie Doom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But the the dynastic run of UCLA in the 80s, then Arizona's turn in the 90s. Then with the onset of the championship series and the game grows yep. to the Midwest and the Southeast, and now in the midst of the dynasty that is Oklahoma. Oh. And I think what we're going to enjoy, just like softball fans around the country, around the world these next few days is everybody loves to watch a dynasty, whether you want them to win it or you want them to see them lose it. And so there's something for everybody in this field yeah. as Oklahoma goes for that unprecedented four-peat. And we have four teams here, including this Duke team, trying to win their first national championship. And because they've been more beatable, they have more losses this year than they have the last three. And because of that, every every team here knows there's more of a chance now than the last three. Well, it's the intrigue, right? That's why people are going to pay attention to the game. They want to watch the game. The offense has been there right, during this, this run, this dynasty that they've created over the last five, six, seven years. I think it's like you said, Jess, it's the vulnerability of being able to put up runs against them. Claire Davidson grounds out right back to the pitcher. 4 teams with 50 plus wins, including this Duke side. That's the most in World Series history. We have all three of the National Player of the Year finalists. We have four teams that have won championships in the past. And the number one seed, it's not an easy ride. In the 19 years that we've been doing this with a one seed, they've only won the championship eight of those 19 years. So we'll see if Texas can break through this year and win their first national championship in their seventh attempt. So what you're saying is when you're expected to win, it's tough, right? <laughs> And, and a, how many times have we seen it come down to either the hot team or, or a pitcher that's just on a phenomenal yeah. run? I, I mean, when you say that, it reminds me of Megan King in Florida State, yeah. right, and what they did, the way she was able to just get on a tear. And, and, and a lot of times it does come down to that and the belief system. That's, a, that's a, one of the only four teams that yeah. lost their first game, like these two teams did, and still came all the way back to win the national championship. And under the old format. Very good, grounds to second. Two down. Hey, the Women's College World Series Finals, so we're round, we're a double elimination until we get down to the final two teams. And then it's best two out of three. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all at 8 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Francesca Freelich. You know what else is kind of cool? Tomorrow we play on ABC, and we should have a great carryover crowd from a WNBA game. Awesome. Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark oh, that's showdown tomorrow. Good one. Ooh. All day women's sports. Mm -hmm. Our doubleheader tomorrow night will be Florida and Texas. Freelich grounded to short her first time up. Ball. 
on setting and down the third base and right field lines. Challenging that right side defense. Freelick draws the walk. Just the first free pass with Brisky. So with uh, Kelly Torres coming up, Patrick Murphy goes out to talk with his freshman pitcher. Kayla Beaver is loosening up out there in the bullpen. She got the start yesterday through 68 pitches in six innings. Plenty fresh and ready to go today. Yeah, she was efficient, really just that one mistake. on deck tonight, another elimination game. Oklahoma State and Stanford. I know softball fans have their fingers crossed that that might be Naja Kennedy and Lexi Kilfoyle in the circle tonight, the showdown of all Americans, trying to save their seasons. One of the best rise ball pitchers in the game, against one of the best drop ball pitchers in the game. Oh, yeah. There's that go-ahead run over at first base for Duke. Torres is a good two-out hitter. The throw sails a slot and getting in the back door safe is Freelich. Another one of those swim moves. Like using her arms and her leg on the back end. You talk about an athletic play. Let's see if Alabama is going to challenge. Coaches get two challenges apiece. Alabama is challenging the ruling of the field at safe at second. I mean, just the quickness of this play, because she had to react so quick as she's diving in. She sees the tags come. Watch that front arm. Oh, <laughs> moves out of the way. And then watch her foot after she comes off the back <laughs> to stay on. Yeah, the question is, did I she get her on the forearm? On the forearm got her. I just love the move. I don't know. After review, the ruling on the field has been changed. The runner is out. Alabama's first charge conference. Now, this is just a great play all the way around. Giles is going to pick this out of the dirt. Just an incredible athletic move. Really good job. By Your defense, we've seen them be amazing all postseason, but how is Cassidy Kerr getting the help at the wall, particularly from Amaya Burgess? They want to make plays for her. They know she is pitching her heart out for us out there on the mound, and they live for those plays. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thank you. Marissa Young, who was here as a player at the University of Michigan and now bringing Duke back here for the first time in school history, looking for their first win. And this was the defensive web jam in the third. Can't get enough looks at this because of her ability to understand where the wall is. There's so much coming into this. The length that she had to run to get there, the communication from Deanna Jennings, her center fielder, and then you're welcome. Was that directed towards you, the kiss up, yeah. the, up <laughs> yeah. the left fielder? It's like a left field thing. It's yeah, a thing. For sure. You guys have a, not got, a secret I got handshake, you, girl. but yeah. a smooch. You know, that defense, 33.6 defensive run saved. That's incredible. All right, we got a 1 1 ball game heading to the fourth. Win or go home for Duke and Alabama. And here is Marley Giles had the RBI double to score the run in the first. Her 12th RBI of the season after she missed uh, over a month out with a broken arm. So that makes her throw down to second base just a moment ago even more special to throw out the would-be base stealer. Yeah, she's definitely a pick-me-up when she's in the game behind the dish as well as with that bat. When she's in that four spot, doubling her first at bat. Ball 
I like the move, too, by uh, Marissa Young to stick with Cassidy Kurd. She's already into the fourth inning. Remember, yesterday, she only pitched two innings, and then they switched, got lifted when she was throwing pretty well. Here's the 3-0 to Giles. That's in for a strike. Look at the uh, outfield, Jess. Yeah, the double that was hit was in right center field. So now you got Deanna Jennings is now literally playing the right center field gap. You'll see a couple steps over from that 220. She's a good 15 to 20 in the gap where the ball was hit last at bat from Giles. And now fights her way back to three and two. Kurt has so much movement on that pitch. It's coming up. It's curving around the back half of the plate. Would have been ball four, but it hit the knob of the yep. Yeah, Marley point out, hit the knob. Appreciate that so much. Eliminates any chance of replay review. Just mm -hmm. the hitter knows. <laughs> Honesty is a good policy. <laughs> Percentages too to hit that small knob. <laughs> Giants hammers that to third. Gold stays down on it. Fires to first. One away. Alabama just one hit the first time through the order on Kurd. Only the one hit so far the second time through. Here's Bailey Dowling. They're in the five spot in the lineup. Alabama, of the eight teams here, they have the lowest batting average. So their success so far in this NCAA tournament, just timely hits, putting a few together, winning games, 3-2, winning games on one hit, a grand slam. Ground ball to Baker at short, two down. Next for Alabama, number 17. And so Riley able Valentine. to work its way through the holes in the concourse right now. So there's still a lot of light on the right side of the infield and out in center and right field as Riley Valentine steps in. Pitcher circle now into the shade. Ball top. Well, and Duke's still really shifted in the outfield. This is exactly what you were talking about, Jess. You could see that Jenning is way over. And it's three righties in a row. So Giles, Dowling, Valentine now. These three righties are really working outer half and almost just telegraphing where yes. they're going to be pitching. You know, as a hitter, when you see the defense yes. alignment like that, you're gonna yeah, yeah. You, you can <laughs> split the plate. Just absolutely no. And normally Cassidy Curd is going to come in to these righties and you tell the game plan. But when you get a defense, a center fielder that's going to move that far over as a hitter, you're like, sweet, I know where to hit it. Yep. And so as a pitcher, you also have to know when your defense is shifted that much, you really have to make sure you're hitting your spots, right? Because they're aligned to where you're supposed to be throwing the ball. And that's one of the things you can do with Cassidy Curd. She's one of the best in the business. We talked about it earlier, 61% in the zone. Goes with that outside pitch. She does not walk a lot of batters. And so when you have that sort of control, you hit the glove, the defense can follow the glove. It, it really rounds out your ability to be able to position your defense knowing that you're gonna get more outs, right? It's the numbers game. It's the math, Beth, within the game. Uh, yeah. I was sort of paying attention to that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one came oh. inside on her, and she rockets that foul. Doesn't that look familiar? Uh -huh. Riley Valentine with the first inning grand slam against Tennessee in game three of their Supers. That was the difference maker. They went on to win four to one. Smoked the ball to left field. That one's 76 miles an hour off the bat. You're, re you're reaching 80. You have smoked it. Kurt's got her here, one and two. 
Upstairs, sky it out to center. Jennings will drift over to make the catch. A one, two, three inning for Duke. That means we get another look at the gold standard of Blue Devil Power Hitter. Hit it farther. Number two, hit it harder. You know, simple as that. Uh, they made some great plays. Uh, I think it was center field or left field took a home run away. So um, we're putting the bat on the ball. We just got to find a spot. What do you like about your team's sense of urgency? This is an elimination game. How have they responded? Number one, I love scoring in the first inning. That was huge. Marley's double with a runner at second and two outs. Two out hitting is key in the World Series. We need some more of that tonight. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Great to see you. You too. That was Giles with the two out RBI double in the first to score Kenley Cahalen for the Alabama run. Duke evened it up in the second with an on a gold home run on a 3-2 rise ball. And there you see the tied scoring in this NCAA tournament. They've been really good early. They're gonna need one late to stay alive and play on Sunday. First pitch swing and line to short Cahalen is there. Winner of this one will face the loser of the Texas Florida game that will be played in prime time on ESPN tomorrow night. And that Sunday afternoon game will be one of our two ABC games this weekend. Three o'clock tomorrow, three o'clock Sunday. Another first pitch swinging. This one gets by Cahalen. And the base hit gold is two for two. She's been smoking them both. Look at her hips open up. She knows this pitch is going to come inside. Watch, watch those hips open up. Hands follow the torque that she gets. We've seen a lot of hard hits. This one's 70 miles an hour. Doesn't always have to be in the air. Gold the home run and now a hard single. Well, the home run on a 3-2 count. Flat rise ball more so on the outer half that she got around. And uh, both the pitching coach, Lance McMahon, and the head coach, Patrick Murphy, out. Somebody else just ran out to the bullpen. I'm not sure if that's where Kayla Beaver is or if she's already in the dugout. But a pitching change coming for Alabama in a 1-1 game in the fourth. Okay, when you turn around, you're going to see someone. You have a turkey and cheese. Let's imagine that LL Cool J has a bubble around him. Do we want to be hey, inside? Hey, I'm Keith. There are some situations that young homeowners turning into their parents just can't handle. Yep, there he is. There's my nephew. Now I got a video of him. Uh, hey, coming out of the bullpen, the senior from Jackson, Tennessee. And she'll come on in relief of Jocelyn Brisket. 18 and 10 this year with a 1.67 ERA, her seventh postseason appearance with the Tide. Beaver can throw with some really good velocity. A lot of great movement to a drop ball that just explodes down into the ground. Look at the over top rotation on that pitch to get that movement. Curveball in the outer half, really late, sharp. She likes to thread that needle on the outer half, run it away from you. She also has a very good rise ball, but her chase on her time, she'll get you to chase over 30% of the time on that pitch. And then how about a rise ball, a whiff rate? of over 24% on that rise ball in the upper half. Yeah, one of the things too that she does so well, Smitty, is she loves to come inside of hitters, and we talked about it a ton. Most of the time, pitchers are uncomfortable getting in the kitchen for these hitters. Kayla Beaver is fearless in that way. She has a little bit of a tendency to hit batters because of that, but you're exactly right. Jess, she loves, doesn't matter, lefty, righty. She'll throw across her body and come into lefties. A lot of right-handed pitchers don't Nobody like to do that. They're typically the arm side of the plate. And she knows if you're going to dominate, you've got to be able to throw on the inner half. So the second team All-American steps onto the pitching rubber to face Giselle Tapia. Seventh spot in the order with the go-ahead run aboard for the Blue Devils. Out of gold with this one-out single. The 
is the A1 coach. A little behind it, A1 2. Giselle singled her first time up against Brisky. Travel ball teams in the house <laughs> in town for a tournament. <laughs> this is pretty dang cool, the environment that's here. <laughs> so much at stake on this Elimination Friday for Duke and Alabama, Stanford and Oklahoma State. Ground ball, Heaven over to Esmond at first two down. And gold into scoring position now, so can the Blue Devils get the two-out clutch? From the bottom of their order, Jada Baker. Tried to sacrifice Bunt. The first two strikes are last about, and it's striking out. The drop ball against Brisky. Beaver very stingy this year with runners in scoring position. Opponents hitting just a buck 52. The numbers for Baker this postseason. Three for 19. Struck out in the second. And now 0 and 2. Well, and that's where Beaver's so strong, where she can really stretch the zone, curveball out or half. You barely get your bat on it as it's running away from you. So she'll keep you in check on the inner half and then run that curveball away. Swing and a miss coming inside on her and a strikeout for Beaver to end the threat. Go ahead run, stranded at second base. The summer of 30 for 30 begins June 4th on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. show on dirt here at the Women's College World Series. Elimination Friday night at Devon Park, Alabama and Duke. One of these clubs down to their final swings here in a matter of moments or hours. <laughs> in a 1-1 ball game, the first of our doubleheader tonight. Two teams will be going home. Stanford and Oklahoma State are coming up next. Winner gets the day off tomorrow. They'll be back to play another elimination game on Sunday against either Texas or Florida. Cassidy Kurd back to work. Lauren Essman out to left center, and that's Deanna Jennings. Seven, eight, and nine coming up here for the Tide. One down. Now batting right Johnson. Kern had the one mistake to Giles in that first inning that drove in a run and uh, not much doing since. She's retired 12 of the last 13 and has been very democratic with the uh, fly outs and ground outs to let her defense do the work. No, no free passes. The one, the one hit was a drag bunt yeah. since the double, so really just one hard hit. Here's Lauren Johnson. Uh oh, toe pick. 
What's that, Smitty? Your illegal gets? Yeah, your cleat gets stuck. Yeah. So either her her back uh, her back leg potentially hit the, the rubber with the <laughs> front spike, or she just didn't get the front foot up. So the count goes to two and zero oh with her fiftieth pitch coming up. Very efficient so far today. right back in with a strike. Lauren had a hit yesterday against UCLA when she came on to relieve the injured Larissa Pruitt. A rise at the eyes that she couldn't resist, two and two. She and her sister Jenna playing together. They had a fun story the other day about how Lauren has already saved Jenna's season once, the fifth year senior there on the left with a key hit in the Super Regionals. And this one to fly out to right. Those two hoping that uh, well, maybe one or the other can come up clutch here late in the game. Now that is second baseman number 22. Here's Callie, Callie Hevlin. A well-struck ball that was uh, Due to leave the yard back in the third before Amaya Burgess grabbed it and brought it back in. <laughs> oh and two. Cassidy Curd, who was handled more of the pitching duties here in the postseason, was telling us she had a chat with Marissa Young before this tournament began, said, you know what, I can do better. I want to do better, I want to do more. And her coach told her, well then, don't try and be perfect. Just go out and be you and have some fun and sling it. Fun. And that is what she has been doing for the Blue Devils in this NCAA tournament. A lot of pitchers are like that. Sometimes you try to get too perfect. You worry about the wrong things. You tighten up. And when you tighten up, you don't have spin speed. And the ball moves when you have spin speed. It's not always about pitch speed. Two-two count here. Evelyn gets a hold of another one. Will Burgess be able to track it down? Yeah, no, it's off of her glove. And all the way down to third base is Hevlin. Almost another spectacular play by Burgess. But Jess, it looked like she couldn't locate the wall on that one. It was hit to almost the exact same spot. And what's interesting is watch Burgess. She's going to actually jump too early. Instead of getting to the wall like she did with the other one, watch her jump, and she still had room. Still another foot. She makes that catch literally the same spot from the same hitter. This time, Hevlin in with a triple. Her second of the season, and Joey I in the first that got him on the board. And you can just tell that Hevlin was seeing the ball really well out of the hand of Curd. Fouling, even the ball she's been fouling back. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, Patrick Murphy just talked about it. They want to be gritty, not pretty. And this is something that he's been working on all season. They had to actually do what he called the grit at bats, where they had to change a stance, widen out, split grip. He, they had to actually show him what they were doing differently in the box to be different. He said, I moved up to 35 feet. I was pitching them BP, and I wanted to see those gritty types of hits, just like we saw there. That is an adjustment they have made in the last three weeks of the season to try to get better in these moments that matter the most. 
I call it the grid approach, and every one of them had a way, and it wasn't for two strikes. It was actually for big moments, yeah. big games, to be able to either shorten up, move in the box, do something different. Yeah. Because this team has struggled so much offensively. Yeah, make an adjustment, right? A couple of pitchers up in the pen, both corners choked in big time with White and the top of the order. And what a moment for the pride of Phoenix City in her second season, not highly recruited, not even by Alabama until late in the spring when Patrick Murphy finally came around to talking to her and said, hey, where have you been? She said, I've been waiting for you, coach. I want to play softball at Alabama. And he said, well, all right, let's do it. And here she is in the biggest moment of her young career. She was already responsible for their big walk-off win in the Super Regionals against Tennessee with her infield contact and speed down to first. And she draws the four-pitch walk. Runners on the corners with two outs. And go back to Amaya Burgess. The first catch. Look at she's got the shades on. The sun able to see it. Beautiful catch. And then exactly same hitter, same situation. No shades. Sun in her eyes. She jumps too early. Misses this by an inch. That sun is a big deal and a big factor for the outfield right now. Cahalen, 0 for 2, reached on an error and scored in the first. Murph at Alabama did not like the strike zone on that one, and he just received a warning. It'll be interesting, too, here to see if he sends White, try to create a little bit of havoc on a first and third play. Duke did that to Missouri in the Super Regionals. Drove in their only run yesterday against UCLA. We just heard from Holly Rowe talking about the grit for Kenley Cahalan. A wide stance, no stride is what she tries to do in these situations. It's paid off so far. She's better than 500 with runners on base this NCAA tournament. She tries to take her lower half out of it. She's so strong with her upper body. That's why she's wider in her stance. Just wants to get her hands there. Go ahead at third base. One and two. And this is what Patrick Murphy talked about to Holly Rowe. He said, we have to be good in situational hitting, two out, runners in scoring position, runners on. That's how you win games at the World Series. Not sending White yet at first base. Here's the one-two from Kurd. Cahalen skies it. Jennings out in center, and she's got it. And the runner stranded at third. Missed chance for Bama. We are still even at one apiece as Kurd works out of the jam. Good morning, everybody. We are here to discuss the S. Let's talk in dynasties. Talking three peats. A clash of titans. Are you ready? Because here they come. Big day tomorrow in the winner's bracket, and the doubleheader starts on ABC with 12-time national champion UCLA, seven-time champion Oklahoma, owners of both three-peats in World Series history, and they will tussle at three Eastern. Tomorrow night, top-seeded Texas and Florida. And, oh boy, that UCLA, Oklahoma, showdown. I think the first question is, who's going to start for both teams? Mm. There are options for there the coaches. Options. There are options. 
If you win that game tomorrow, you are into the semis, one win away from the championship series. If you lose, it's a longer road to get back. No, dead ball, dead ball. Dead ball, dead ball, dead ball, dead ball, dead ball. More immediate are the two games tonight, win or go home. Alabama didn't think that should have been a dead yeah. ball. I don't think it hit her foot. Uh -uh. She hit it behind her, so it looked like it hit her foot, but I don't think it did. Yeah, this is her oh. foot. I mean, when she you see a yeah. batter run, you know that because <laughs> when it hits you, you don't run. <laughs> Kayla Beaver, who came on in relief last inning and got a big strikeout with the go-ahead run out at second base after Jocelyn Brisky started and threw three and a third innings. Trying to tag team the win. Cassidy Curd has gone the distance so far for Duke. <laughs> and the punch out. Second strikeout as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Kayla Beaver grew up wanting to play for Alabama softball. Just living three and a half hours away, she would often go to Alabama softball games where she got to meet the legendary pitcher Jackie Trano when she was just a little girl. Well, they caught up again this year's alumni day. Here she is with Jackie when she's all grown up. And isn't it amazing that those two young ladies have both pitched in this circle at the Women's College World Series. That little girl had a dream very firmly in her mind. And even though she didn't get recruited a lot out of high school, ended up going to Central Arkansas, she went in the transfer portal and she found her way to Alabama. Talk about dreams coming true. She had some big victories when she was at Central Arkansas, beat Arkansas a couple times. I mean, she she was legit and, and people knew about it. So the yeah. second she went into the portal, yeah, some activity. She told us Alabama was the first to call and that was the only one she needed to hear from. And well, when you talk about the J-Train, they've played for the national championship twice, winning it once. And Jackie was the ace in both her sophomore and senior seasons back in 2012 when they beat Oklahoma and in uh, 2014 when they lost to Florida in the all-SEC final. How cool is it though for every little girl that's nine or 10 years old? You see it now more than ever, right? They're all lining up to get autographs and photos taken with these players. And that was Kayla Beaver with Trina after she was had done what she did in the circle. And now she's in that same position, same spot. That's the dream. Yeah, you have to be able to see yourself there, right? You work hard and all these young girls that are here watching. Let's pull the X-Men foot race. And she wins it to retire Jennings. That's a big get at the top of the order. Two down. And it keeps a base runner off the paths for Claire Davidson coming up. Just barely getting that foot in there. This is where it'd be great to see the double bag. Yep. Just thought I'd throw that in. Hopefully that's coming next year. We've been talking about it for a long time now. SEC even brought it in for their baseball yeah. tournament. I mean, if baseball is moving in that direction, softball can get out in front of that. Avoid collisions down at first base. That we've seen prove very costly to players' seasons and careers. So here's Davidson. Esman busy at the bag. One, two, three inning for Beaver. We've played five and we're all square on Elimination Friday. Be fourth on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Welcome back to the 2024 Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. About to go to the top of the sixth inning in this elimination game, 1-1 one, one game going on. Pam Ward, Maddie Shipman, and Danielle Laurie. And where's the offense? Uh, you know what, Pam? I don't know if we've said this before. Pitchers duel here at the Women's College World Series. I've been so impressed by these pitchers, especially the ones making their first trip here to OKC that have really stepped up on this stage. Well, and I look at this as this is where Bama is money. They're used to these extra inning games. If that's where they get to, they're comfortable starting brisky, bringing in Kayla Beaver. 
we'll see how long Cassidy Curd can go. Yeah, so far, so good for uh, both pitching staffs. Let's get it back to back. Thank you very much, Pam. D'Lo with the velo, Shipman. Glad to have them with us here at this Women's yes. College World Series. Let's see, we got, got a cool team. Kevin yes. Brown, Amanda Scarborough, Alyssa Lang all coming up for the night cap tonight. Stanford and Oklahoma State. That one is also win or go home. Nailbiter here into the sixth. That's a foul ball as Jenna Johnson will lead things off. Three, four, five. Cassidy Curd laid down the threat in that last inning, and the Crimson Tide stranded the go-ahead runner at third base. One ball, one strike. Both teams with chances denied thus far. Alabama lost yesterday to UCLA on a sixth inning three run home run. Who will have the late game heroics tonight? When you're in the circle as a pitcher and your team scores runs for you in the sixth inning, it's money. It is like so exciting because you're like three more outs. It just, it pumps you up. And so when those big hits do come, how about when those big hits haven't come yet and you're into the sixth inning with your <laughs> season or your career on the line, Smitty? Then you hope for the seventh inning. <laughs> <laughs> and then the eighth. <laughs> Never many innings. <laughs> Look, someone just plate one for me. Well, and conversely, Jess, how tough is it knowing that this may be your last at bat when you're stepping in here in this kind of situation? Like a Jenna Johnson, the fifth year senior. That's the biggest thing is you cannot let that into your mind. And I think it enters it more when you're you're losing. Yes, 100%. Yeah. When it's tied, you're in game mode. Yeah. It's the first inning. It's like the first game of the season. That's what you feel like. It's when you're losing that you start to feel those moments. Yep. 2-2 two -two from Curd. Ground ball. Backing up his Baker. It's short. Ooh, got her. One down. Well, uh, if you're Alabama, shoot, they're just getting started. They've already played two 14-inning games and one nine-inning game this postseason. Two and one in extras. Kind of what they do. Yeah. Well, I feel like they've done that here at the World Series <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, they're a team that's built around their, their pitching staff, and you know, if they play good defense behind them, you don't give up runs, you typically don't lose games. You may not win them because your offense isn't scoring runs, but you typically don't lose the games. Third time in the last four years they've been here at the World Series. They were two and out last year trying to avoid that fate. Giles lifts one, that's got a chance, and that is gone! Marley Giles, sixth inning home run to put the Crimson Tide in front. Marley Giles, look at where this pitch is located. This is not a home run pitch. Home run pitches are up in the zone. They're not low and away. And you see her go down to get this, get underneath a pitch to drive through and up through this. Giles, a beautiful job. And we've seen Alabama do this wait late. Right center field, no one's catching this one. Jennings got it. What you got for us, Holly? Well, what makes that home run even more incredible, Marley Giles, the second game of the regular season, broke her forearm, and she had to have surgery. They thought she'd be out four to six weeks. She had a lot of hardware installed, a pin, plates in her, a plate in her arm, and instead of being out four to six weeks, she was out two. They brought her back very slowly, tried to be smart about how many times she was getting to catch, how many at-bats, but you see that forearm heavily taped that she could hit that ball with that injury just a few months ago. It's incredible. 
Yeah, she got hit by a pitch in the Kentucky series at the end of March, which is also the last time she hit a home run. And it's only her fourth game back in the starting lineup. Returning full-time to her catching duties in the postseason. And a clutch home run there for the Tide. Here's Riley Valentine. Smitty talked about it. You know, Marley Giles coming back into this lineup has changed this lineup because it's really been a lot about Kahalen, about Riley Valentine, who got a huge home run in the postseason. But a lot of other hitters that you could pitch around to get to everybody else. Valentine off the end of the bat. Davidson. Side is retired, but the Tide take the lead. How about Marley Giles, the catcher? The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Elimination Friday night at the Women's College World Series. Alabama leading Duke 2-1. to one. Coming up next, Oklahoma State Stanford. And then our winner's bracket doubleheader tomorrow. Oklahoma, UCLA, 3 Eastern on ABC. Primetime on ESPN for Texas and Florida. The winner of this game will play the loser of that Texas-Florida game on Sunday. And there's a, a home run ball for the Giles clan. Love it. After Marley sent it out, her second career World Series home run. She hit one here against Tennessee last year. So now Duke has six outs to work with here in the sixth and the seventh. To try and rally and come up with the first World Series win in school history. And how about Marley Giles behind the plate? We haven't been able to give her as much credit. She just stole a strike right yeah. there. That was below the knees. Beautiful job of bringing that pitch up into the zone. We've seen her throw out her runner. Not just the bat, folks. Facing Amina Vega, the first team All-American. And then on deck, Frankie Freelich, their home run hitter this postseason. Kayla Beaver on in relief has to face the heart of the order here in the sixth. O2. Vega fends it off. Well, the other thing, too, you were talking about Giles behind the plate, Jess, and just you know, how quiet she is, the way she moves. She steals those strikes. She gives a great lane for the umpire to be able to see. And as a pitcher, that's what you want. Slow roller to Hevlin. Scoops it over the first one down. Here's what Francesca did yesterday. Back in the second inning, the solo shot. She went around a Kelly Maxwell pitch on the outside corner, pulled it. It's just a take the lead, by the way, against Oklahoma. They were up one zip. It didn't last long. They ended up losing that one, but... Big moment for Freelick. Her third home run in the last couple of weeks. Instrumental in their three game series win over Missouri last weekend. Got a brother, Sal Freelick, a first round draft pick from the Brewers. He's their starting right fielder. He made some magic last year. She taught him everything he knows. Yeah. <laughs> A surprise team in first place right now. The NL Central. Kayla Beaver has retired six in a row here, coming out of the bullpen. Nothing has left the infield. She has struck out a couple. And right out, right out in center, two down. So it's the first World Series in program history. Your first big at bats. And now coming up in a moment to try and rally your side for Kelly Torres, who Holly Rowe shared that great story about what do you do with your nerves in these situations? 
those butterflies in your belly. She said, you gotta create a garden for them. Let the butterflies fly. I love and her. Enjoy the moment. Yeah, I love what she talked to her teammates about that. You know, whether or not you're nervous or you're excited, it's your, your body presents in the same manner. So use it. Use that excitement. So smart, too. I mean, the way that she talked about it, I'm sitting there listening to her like, you're right. Why do I get so nervous? Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> same busy. feeling, excitement, nerves. It's the same emotion, but it's what you put your name on. If you call it nerves, right. then you, you yep. think it's One bad. Just call it excitement, own it. And We've started garden up here. <laughs> Got butterflies all over the place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everywhere they go, beat Carolina. Love it. Kelly Torres got a cool podcast too. Softball speakeasy. Oh yeah. <laughs> two and two. Give us two sets. Bama fans rise for Beaver. So she tries to stretch that zone again on the outer half curveball. Joined her. 69 miles an hour. Another packed house tonight at Devon Park. Day two of the World Series. Ground ball to Cahalen. She'll gobble that up at short. A one, two, three inning. Beaver spotless in relief. 2-1 tied to the seventh inning. Coming up next, another elimination game. Stanford and Oklahoma State on deck, but Nyja Kennedy, oh, looks like she might be warming up to get another start tonight. Will it be against Lexi Kilfoyle in a clash of All-Americans? to keep their seasons alive and into Sunday. Winner of that one will get the day off tomorrow. We got some business to tend to here first. Top of the seventh, Alabama with a 2-1 lead as they come to the plate. Marley Giles, an RBI double in the first, a solo home run in the sixth. The difference, here's the bottom of the order to face Cassidy Curd. And Kendall Clark, the pinch hitter, grounds out, one down. The tide with a late lead, like the one they have right now. Twenty-eight and zero into the seventh inning. That's that pitching staff. I mean, they, have, they have been good, one of the best ERAs in the country. Cassidy Curd wants a quick one, two, three inning and then get her teammates' bats swinging. For the Duke Blue Devils, their last chance in the bottom of the seventh will include their home run hitter tonight, Anna Gold. Mm. 0-2 from Curd to Lauren Johnson. Next, Over the helmet. Yeah, these next two hitters are important, obviously, Johnson. but. Hevlin in that nine hole, she has seen Curd very well. She had the home run brought back in by Burgess, and then she had that triple. Mm -hmm. Made her head coach Patrick Murphy jump on that one. And Marissa Young out to talk with Curd. 
Making sure everybody's on the same page there after that hard hit foul ball. Marissa herself, a former pitcher. Let's check in with Holly. Well, I did want to just give Marissa Young some real credibility or credit because she's brought her team here to the Women's College World Series just seven years after starting the program. She pitched here as an All-American for Michigan. She's the first woman of color to bring her team here as a head coach to the Women's College World Series. Not only that, three of her four children are going Division I as athletes. This is a woman who does everything well. She is elite, and her team said, we are elite women on campus because that's what Marissa Young has trained us and taught us to be. Excellence every day. Lauren Johnson, Oppo, two down. Well, the other thing too for Marissa, you know, there weren't a lot of young black players around the World Series when she was here back in the early 2000s. And she has found some incredible young black players that she has brought to Duke that have excelled here, that Holly mentioned have been elite as the game continues to grow in underdeveloped populations around softball. And you, well, you think of the Natasha Watleys and the Odyssey Alexanders and the Shea Knightons over the years who have excelled on this stage. In foul ground and oh. trying for it on the top of the dugout was Tapia, almost got there. He got close to this, and this was already going to go over the fence. Oh! Curd mm. and Callie Hevlin, as Smitty just referenced, two well struck balls. Change a little bit. They're, they're throwing more up at her hands, trying to get underneath her bat. Ball. It's a more rise ball than curve ball. One caught at the top of the wall. The other one bounced off of the top of the wall, almost at the exact same spot, out in left field. One thing Alabama does consistently well is they, they hit balls up in the zone well. There has not been a, a strikeout, not a whole lot of swing and miss. They will put the ball in play. They have swings. Their swing paths are built more up to down, meaning they can hit a rise ball, stay on top of it. Most swings nowadays, everyone's trying to hit the ball out of the park so it's going down to up. So you're susceptible to the rise ball, but Alabama is the opposite. Four hits tonight, but it's good enough for two runs. They have 10 wins this year of their 38 with five hits or less. It's all been about clutch. And they know it. They know that their team is built on pitching and that was timely hits because they're not going to get a whole lot of them. They've had a lot of injuries this year and they understand if they don't take advantage, they're not going to win games. Well, they have a staff pitching an ERA below two, so they don't need a lot of runs to to win those games. And when they do get the long ball, they have not lived on the long ball. In fact, coming into today's game, just 41 home runs on the on the season. In fact, Giles, with that home run, that was her seventh of the year after being out for two months. She's still the leader in home runs on the team. <laughs> so, Patrick Murphy's calling it their redemption tour after. For the first time in school history, they were a below 500 team in the league. And now here they are in the final eight, trying to get into the final six in the country. Eighth pitch of this at-bat coming from Curd. Yes! Oh. 
She was late on that, too, got jammed. This is where, too, Smitty, I feel like Cassidy Kerr not having an off speed that yes. she throws very regularly. We've seen a lot of the same pitch over and over, and the change of anything off of her harder stuff would be so huge right now. Yeah, Kurt throws a changeup, but only 5% of the time, so doesn't really use it as a weapon. She does not have a strikeout tonight, letting her defense do the work. Hevlin lifts that the opposite way this time. That's a deep fly ball, and back on the track with room for Claire Davidson. So here we go to the bottom of the seventh. The Blue Devils have to start things off. Take you back to the second inning, and you're right, it's been Marley Giles. Actually, the defense, all kinds of different plays that we've been able to see. Duke getting on the board first, going up 1-0, and then Marley Giles has been the responder in the offense for Alabama. Gold followed up the second inning home run with a single in the fourth. Gold, Tapia, and Baker. They have three outs to work with. Well, this is the first time she's facing Beaver, so I think she's going to see a different dose of pitches. Both of her hits were off of freshman starter Jocelyn Brisky. Beaver has retired eight straight since entering the game in the fourth inning. Beaver's been outstanding with her ratio of pitches. Strike rate at 83% in this relief appearance. Oh, she's been making it hard for these hitters to catch a breath already up 0-2. Yeah, well, when you hammer the zone as a hitter, you, you've got to take that bat off your shoulder. And then you, know, you start doubting yourself at times. Is that a strike? Is it not? You're, when you're so much around the zone, and that's when then she can chase you. She can expand that zone. Gold sees that one through. Played against Alabama last year in the NCAA tournament. Got bounced. Wanted to transfer and wanted to transfer to Tuscaloosa. And she's got an out in the seventh. Beaver retires gold. Two outs away from playing another day. Tapia, the grad student, singled in the second, grounded out in the fourth. She was the first one to face Beaver. Everybody clap your hands. 300 hitter in the postseason. Laying it all on the line tonight. Child again behind the plate. It's all about that shadow zone. Beaver's going to throw strikes, but when you can also get the pitches that are off the plate called as well, that is why you have a battery, the teamwork of both of them tonight. Oh. All out of play at 70 miles an hour from Kayla. Inside the bag. Yep. Good. Took a bite out of Cam Ellison's ankle. Says he's good. Be a battling right now. Pitch inside and just gets it foul. <laughs> Possible for Ellison to get out of the way.
Good fight here from Tapia. Oh, he saw her single off of Brisky, but back in that second inning, but on a gold home run, and Tapia lasered one down the line. Seen her hit it hard all fields. Great look. That's a nice shot. <laughs> Makes me want to go sit out there and watch, and watch the ball. These drone shots are like, oh, they're, they're mesmerizing. <laughs> I don't know, Smitty, after this, I think you and I should watch Hoax and the Cardinal. That's right. Sit in the stands with that view. Cool. Get a bucket of current, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Still 0-2, and still on deck. Stanford and Oklahoma State. And Kevin, Amanda, and Alyssa on the call for you. He's <laughs> having a <it> bat. Yeah. <laughs> and Beaver does. She's going to light up the strike zone. She's going to give you a lot to hit, but it's been all over. And again, you know, not a lot of off speed. Either one of these pitchers, Curd or Beaver, does not really throw a changeup hardly at all. A little bit of a screwball. Not a lot. Only about 11% of the time. I'm surprised she doesn't use that. Try to stretch that zone into that right handed batter's box. Eight straight pitches, eight straight strikes from Kayla Beaver. And this is where at 02, I think she needs to be a little bit more out of the zone. So I would go screwball away, stretch the zone, come back underneath the hand. So that effective velocity, throw a pitch, low and outside, screwball moving away, then come rise ball back underneath the hands. Okay, to put a little dirt on it even, right? Yeah, absolutely. Make them reach. Second, two down. And Bama is one out away from advancing. Duke, one out away from heading home. That look says it all. <laughs> Deep breath and nervous. Oh. Two to one ball game. This has been a close one. Pinch hitter for Duke, Sarah Goddard, the senior. will take just her fourth plate appearance of this postseason. She's hitting for Jada Baker, two strikeouts. Duke looking for a base runner to pass the bat. And how about this for Alabama? Patrick Murphy knows he's playing with house money, joking with the media this week. You guys must be surprised to see us, huh? <laughs> it was not the regular season that they had hoped for. It was not the SEC tournament that they hoped for. One and done. They spent two weeks thinking about how they could do things different, how they could okay. do things better, how they could defy the odds as a 14 seed. I mean, she's been 0-2. Feels like every hitter, especially these last couple innings. Look at that. Eight strikes. Only six balls out of the zone. Down to their final strike. And Kayla Beaver ends it for Alabama. The Crimson Tide survive in advance. Brisky and Beaver get it done in the circle. Just five hits for the Blue Devils, and Marley Giles drives in both with an RBI double and a solo home run that proves to be the game winner in the sixth inning. After a two and out last year, big win for Alabama. Kudos to Duke. First appearance at the World Series. An amazing year. And Marissa Young getting this team here. So much personality. So